This is the Blurring Out with Eric Blair Show. We're here at the Bonzo Bash, and I'm here with bassist Phil Suzanne. I've been doing this for a few years. I have a history that goes back to Swan Song and uh, being managed by Peter Grant and uh, doing the last record on Swan Song Records, and through that, working with Jimmy Page. And so that was um, part of my very old uh, heritage as well as my big influence. I'm a huge fan, I'm a huge Zeppelin fan, so this has always been something that's been um, undercurrent. Every time uh, we have an opportunity to do something like this, we do it. So between Brian and Doug and, and, and Rowan, and we, we've managed to find ourselves into this little group that appreciates Zeppelin very much, and we go out and do shows under the Moby Dicks when we're not doing anything else. And this is, of course, the annual version of that, where we get to honor John Bonham but we also honor a ton of amazing drummers. You're going to see tonight, I mean, these guys are, some of them are very well known, some of them are not quite as well known, but they're all just tremendous drummers. And it's really fun to see how the, the, the songs and the sounds change with everybody playing exactly the same kit, and the only difference being the actual person. So it's a, it's, a really, it's a really exciting thing. Now tell me, how did you end up with Jimmy Page and Peter Grant and being on Swan Song Records? Um, I, I started playing with a band that was Simon Kirk's band from Bad Company, and the album that we did uh, was released through Swan Song, and we were managed by Peter Grant. So that did ran its course, and uh, the band split up after that. But I stayed in touch with those guys, and uh, that's how I met Jimmy. And then Jimmy came out of hibernation and asked me if I would help him put a band together that turned into the firm. So I worked with him for mm, about 10 months. And then at that time, Ozzy had asked me if I wanted to go on the road with him. And uh, I had to make a very, very difficult decision. On the one hand, Ozzy made a lot of sense to me, and I was very excited about it. And on the other hand, Jimmy, I was a huge fan. and So I said to Jimmy, you know, what's going to happen? I asked him for some advice, and he said, look, I'm probably not going to go and, and do anything for at least another year or so. So, you know, whatever you think you want to do is cool. We stayed friends and everything, so. But it was a very special time in my life. How did you negotiate that world? I mean, the entertainment business can be a very dark world, especially when you're dealing with people that already have stature and power. Indeed. Um, England's a very different place. It was, and, and especially at that time, it was a very small community and everybody sort of knew everybody. So it was much easier, I think, to negotiate that than it would be today. And today, there's also an awful lot of um, BS that goes on today. A lot of people represent things that they're not. Over there, everyone was very straight up and very honest. Because if you if you told something that wasn't true, you'd be found out and um, you'd never work again, or you'd never be um, uh, admitted. To, you'd, you'd you'd break the, the the circle of trust, for want of a better word. So it was it was really heartfelt. I mean, it was just from on, on my sleeve. I just came in one day and said, "Look, this is what's what's. I, I don't really know what to do. What would you do? You know." And so it was as simple as that. That's amazing that, that he didn't... three or something, I don't know, I was really young. Well, uh, tell me what his personality was like uh, working with him. Like, how does he run the show? Oh, Jimmy's the most beautiful personality I ever met. And we stayed friends afterwards, and which, which is a huge testament to that personality. Because a lot of the times, you, when you stop working with somebody, you might never really talk to them again. Um, but we stayed friends for a long, long time. Um, over the years, we've uh, we lost touch a little bit because, you know, the, just the way things drift apart. But he, um, he was some, you know, I remember when I worked with him, he, he always had these ideas. And at the time, he was having a hard time sort of expressing them and trying to get us to understand. He'd been playing in his band for years, and now all of a sudden he was working with two new guys. It was uh, myself and Chris Slade. And he was trying to explain something, and I guess the, 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 the old the Zeppelin band would have known exactly what he was talking about. He was having to bring it back down to real basics to really explain what he was doing. Different timings and different, you know, playing across beats and stuff like that, that was, that's very much synonymous with what he does. And for me, it was so exciting, because as we were arranging these ideas and these songs, I was getting a, a little bit of a glimpse into how Zeppelin probably worked. I mean, I, I'm, 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 I'm saying that very humbly because I wasn't in that band, but it was so much behind closed doors. This was the closest I was going to get to a glimpse of how that came together. And it was fascinating. Jimmy has some unbelievable influences and in, um, a lot of things I, I related to, early rock and roll, Scotty Moore, that kind of stuff, and then more contemporary stuff. Um, and putting all of that together, 
all of a sudden I'd go, oh yeah, yeah I, I see where that comes from, you know? So he, he comes up with these riffs that are just almost very 50s riffs yeah. and then combines that. There's blues, there's funk, there's all kinds of stuff rolled in. So it was a, it was a tremendous time. Actually, looking back on it, I'm more in awe of it than I was at the time. At the time I was like, oh, okay, this is cool. Now I look back on it with a great, great appreciation for the time, you know, and, and, and a, a great, uh, great deal of, um, of, uh, of thanks to him for, you know, allowing me to come in and, and, and play and, you know, work on ideas together. It was a special time. And then tell me, how, the, how did the Aussie thing work out? Um, I had been doing some other shows as well with Jimmy when I wasn't, we, we, we weren't working, I was doing some other gigs and I did a gig with somebody, I did a TV show and Ozzy saw me on the TV show and I got a call that night, uh, hey, uh, from his secretary, Ozzy wants to meet you at a bar. And I sort of knew Ozzy, I knew Sharon and I knew somebody who worked for them, so again there was a, an element of familiarity and I, I remember I'd, I said, uh, there's this bar in London. I said, yeah, 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 I'll be there. I was kind of euphoric of getting after doing this, this, this TV show and I had some friends. I'll be there and all of a sudden, you know, half an hour later, the phone rings again. It's the same person going, where the fuck are you? And I went, what, Ozzy's here? And he's like losing patience. And I went, oh shit, okay, I better go. <laughs> so I went and I met with him and he asked me to come and audition. And I joined a, a, a fairly big audition group, uh, I guess, and, and got the audition. So it was and what, what did you love about working with Jakey e. Lee? Uh, Jake was a phenomenal guitar player. I mean, he was um, a bit of a, a legend in London because, he, first of all, he wasn't from London. Secondly, he had this amazing look, and he was—he um, just had a flair about his playing that was really unique. It wasn't typical. It, it didn't sound like anybody else. His sound was great. His look was great, and. Uh, he just had an insane amount of confidence when he played and that came across and you know that band was a, in essence a three-piece band you know guitar bass and drums which is my favorite format I mean because you you don't have any room or to mess around you you have to be on top of your game the whole time and for that reason I love it because there's nothing better than being you know on ten the whole time you know um, and Jake was fantastic at that I was amazed like when he We'd go into solos and I'd try to pick it up to cover the rhythm for the solos and he would sort of play these solos but there was almost a rhythmic quality to what he was doing so you never noticed that there was a, a guitar missing or a rhythm guitar missing and he was amazing. Now one of the albums that I love and that you're a part of is Vince Neil Exposed. Oh. <laughs> that is such an amazing record and I believe if that had been the next Molly Crew record it would have gone five times platinum. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Tell me about that experience, writing the songs, being a part of that. Um, the experience was kind of, well, Vince and I had been friends for many years. It's also since the early 80s, well before I was in Ozzy. And uh, when I was in Ozzy, we, we were friends and we hung out together a lot. Uh, and so when he left Motley, that was a, um, I guess it was a natural call. His manager, uh, Bruce Bird, called me and they said, hey, you got to come down and, and work with Vince. So I said, okay, let's do this. And we shot the video for You're Invited, but your friend can't come a couple of days later, um, which was a great success. And then we started working on songs. You know, I left Ozzy over some publishing differences. I couldn't agree on publishing with Sharon. And so when I left, I took the ideas with me that I had, that I'd started writing. Those, out, those songs ended up on the Exposed album. So if you listen to those things like, you know, The Edge is S-A-T-O, yeah. and uh, Look in Her Eyes is uh, Bark at the Moon. So all those riffs, they're very, very similar, right? So that's where all that came from. So we worked together on those songs and it was fun. Now, uh, briefly, tell me what you're doing right now. Last in Line. That is with Vivian Campbell and right. Vinnie Apice. We just finished our second record and we just finished recording it. Jeff Pilson producing him. Um, and um, we'll hopefully have it released towards the summer. But uh, the songs are tremendous. We're really excited about it. The last album was did very, very well. And there was always there was a little bit of uh, uh, ap concern or apprehension that we at least come up with something as good as that. And the first couple of songs that we wrote, we looked at each other and went, "Wow, this is great." So once we had those two in the bag, we just looked, said, "You know, let's just have fun with this." So we just carried on writing, and and we've got this uh, record that's almost done now. Great. So please come and see us at Last in Line. And we're very very proud of this project. Well, Phil, Suzanne.
Blaring Out with Eric Blair Show with Phil Suzanne at the Bonzo Bash. Signing off. (laughs) The Blaring Out Show.